Subscribe to both of my YouTube channels, Sharon Winbush, Goddess Sharon, Sharon with two R's. Turn on notifications, like videos, share the videos with everyone that you know, and share them globally. Thank you. The Mute R. Kelly campaign stopped the flow of R. Kelly's income. Sony releasing him uh, hemorrhaged him financially. His inability to tour. He had back taxes because of poor management and accounting that the government seized assets for that. And then he had back child support. He's been um, not in a position to hire the top-notch legal team necessary to get through this entire case, which is why he was compromised in the New York case. He needs all his fans, supporters, or anyone who wants to help to send money directly to him, not through a third party, because he has an upcoming Chicago case and he must have great legal representation to defend himself to the best of his ability. Mr. Kelly is fighting a case in Chicago and he needs all of the assistance that anyone can give from all of his fans and supporters around the world. There are three ways that you can get money to Mr. Kelly. One, you can send money via Western Union. That's for $300 or less. That will get to him fast. Or you can go to the BOP.gov website and send money via credit card. Those are the fastest ways to get it to him. Or you can mail a money order to him uh, to P.O. Box 474701, Des Moines, Iowa, 50947-0001. It will go directly to Mr. Kelly, no third party, no one in between, and he will have a record of who sent what, what amount, and from where it was sent. So it is your way to directly help directly impact, to directly put your hands on R. Kelly and show him that you love him, show that his fans from around the world are supporting him and they want to assist him in fighting for his freedom. Part three of Jennifer Bonjean's motion for acquittal filed February 17th, 2022 in the case of the United States versus Robert Kelly. One, racketeering, Act One, bribery. The government failed to prove racketeering Act One where insufficient evidence existed to prove that defendant caused Demetrius Smith to pay a public aid employee $500 to secure identification for Jane Doe No. 1, Aaliyah. Despite blatant strong arming by the government, Smith's testimony was inconsistent and vague about whether defendant was even present during any discussions about paying money to bribe someone for the fraudulent identification. Smith consistently testified that he discussed the prospect of bribery, of bribing someone to obtain the fake identification with Daryl McDavid. Smith did not obtain any money from the defendant and did not recall discussing it with him, although he allowed that he might have. Whenever Smith failed to testify precisely as to the government, the government wanted, he was refreshed with his prior statements, not because he needed refreshing, but as a clear reminder that if he contradicted himself, he could be charged as a co-conspirator. That type of bullying pervaded Smith's examination and suggested that Smith's testimony may have been pressured by the government, which means it was under duress. After the subject matter had been discussed numerous times throughout Smith's testimony, the ASA asked the following on redirect. When you spoke to the group as you testified on direct examination, 
When you spoke to the group about acquiring a state ID from the welfare office, Aaliyah for money, the defendant was there, right? I'm pretty sure. I think so, but I'm not. I'm just not positive. Even if I said it before, I'm just not positive. I just don't see that in my head right now. Not satisfied with that answer, the ASA asked Smith again whether defendant was present when there was any discussion about a bribery. Despite his clear concern of facing legal repercussions for his testimony, Smith declared, I don't remember if Robert was there. If I said he was there before, I'm not changing that story to change the story. I'm just going back and I'm just trying. I don't see it in my head. I don't see Robert next to me. No rational juror could conclude that this less than convincing testimony provided proof beyond a reasonable doubt that defendant caused Smith to tender money to the public aid officer. Even if the evidence showed that the defendant turned to Smith for assistance in facilitating his marriage to Aaliyah, the Office of Bribery requires proof that defendant at least knew of Smith's intent to bribe a public official and facilitated in the bribery in some way. The record is devoid of evidence that defendant Robert Kelly knew how Smith obtained the identification or facilitated Smith in obtaining the identification. As far as defendant Robert Kelly knew, Smith obtained the identification from a friend who worked in the public aid office. Without Smith's unequivocal testimony that defendant was part of the planning process of obtaining the fraudulent identification, the evidence was insufficient to sustain the bribery offense. Furthermore, Racketeering Act 1 bribery lacks both vertical and horizontal relatedness. It is an isolated offense having no connection to the other charged acts. Or the Mute R. Kelly campaign stopped the flow of R. Kelly's income. Sony releasing him uh, hemorrhaged him financially, his inability to tour. He had back taxes because of poor management and accounting that the government seized assets for that. And then he had back child support. He's been um, not in a position to hire the top-notch legal team necessary to get through this entire case which is why he was compromised in the New York case. He needs all his fans, supporters, or anyone who wants to help to send money directly to him, not through a third party, because he has an upcoming Chicago case, and he must have great legal representation to defend himself to the best of his ability. Mr. Kelly is fighting a case in Chicago, and he needs all of the assistance that anyone can give from all of his fans and supporters around the world. There are three ways that you can get money to Mr. Kelly. One, you can send money via Western Union. That's for $300 or less. That will get to him fast. Or you can go to the BOP.gov website and send money via credit card. Those are the fastest ways to get it to him. Or you can mail a money order to him uh, to P.O. Box 474701, Des Moines, Iowa, 50947 0001. It will go directly to Mr. Kelly, no third party, no one in between, and he will have a record of who sent what, what amount, and from where it was sent. So it is your way to directly help, directly impact, to directly put your hands on R. Kelly and show him that you love him, show that his fans from around the world are supporting him, and they want to assist him in fighting for his freedom. or to the purpose of the enterprise itself. Indeed, as discussed, Supra, the record simply fails to show that in 1994, 
any enterprise existed that had a common purpose of facilitating defendants' sexual desire for minors. Smith testified at length that he had no idea that defendant Robert Kelly was involved in any type of sexual relationship with Aaliyah or any other young women. Smith was certainly part of the defendant's close circle of confidants, but the mere identification of a group of people who worked for the defendant, Robert Kelly, does not an enterprise make. Smith did not testify, testify about any other conduct in which he engaged to advance the alleged purpose of the enterprise. Smith's conduct was nothing more than a singular event that bore no connection to the purpose of the enterprise, which did not exist in any event, and which bears no connection to the other racketeering acts. Furthermore, because the act did not occur within 10 years of any other predicate act that was sufficiently proven, the act is time barred. Racketeering Act 1 was not proved beyond reasonable doubt. Two, Racketeering Act 2, Sexual Exploitation of a Child, Stephanie. The government failed to prove Racketeering Act 2, that is, Sexual Exploitation of Stephanie, where it offered insufficient evidence that defendant used, employed, persuaded, induced, or enticed Stephanie to take part in sexually explicit conduct for the purpose of producing a visual depiction. The government contends that on a single occasion prior to her 18th birthday, defendant had sexual relationships with Stephanie at his studio in Chicago, Illinois, and recorded the episode on a video camera. The government cannot produce the video or the camera on which it was alleged, allegedly recorded. To be clear, the defendant, Robert Kelly, is alleged to have recorded a legal and seemingly consen consensual sex, sex act under the law of the state of Illinois that was only a violation of 18 U.S.C. 2251A because Stephanie was not 18 years of age. The, to demonstrate that defendant committed sexual exploitation of a child pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 2251A, it is not enough for Stephanie to simply allege that defendant recorded sexually explicit conduct. Stephanie offered no testimony that proved that defendant used, persuaded, induced, enticed, or coerced her into sexually explicit conduct. Stephanie had an ongoing sexual relationship with defendant Robert Kelly before the video recording incident and after the video recorded incident. Although she described those sexual experiences in hindsight after the fact as humiliating, it does not follow that the defendant did anything to persuade, induce, entice, or coerce her into sexual activity that was recorded. In fact, Stephanie admits that defendant called her on the phone and told her that he was picking her up and that he wanted to make a video of them having sex and that he would be there shortly. To which Stephanie responded, okay. Although Stephanie clearly regrets this decision, her own testimony shows that defendant did not, did nothing but tell her that he wanted to videotape them having sex, and she agreed. The government must prove that the defendant did something more than just film the sexually explicit conduct. If the act of filming or recording alone was sufficient to sustain the charge, Congress would not have included the requirement that the defendant employ, persuade, endue, entire, or coerce. Furthermore, the government failed to prove that the defendant, Robert Kelly, acted with a purpose of producing a visual depiction of that conduct. Although the jury was erroneously charged that the government could sustain the charge by proving that the purpose was transmitting a visual depiction, the statute requires something different indeed. Producing is defined by the statute as producing, directing, manufacturing, issuing, publishing, or advertising. While the statute also prohibits the transmission of live visual depictions, defendant was not charged with transmitting a live visual depiction, and there is no evidence that he did. Lastly, the party's stipulation 
that the film used in VHS tapes was a type of film that was not produced in Illinois is insufficient to prove by a reasonable doubt that the conduct was recorded on a device made in a foreign country or affected interstate commerce. Accordingly, the government failed to prove Racketeering Act II by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Three, Racketeering Act V, Man Act violation, Geronda. The government failed to prove Racketeering Act V where there was insufficient evidence that Defendant 1 used a facility of interstate commerce to knowingly persuade, induce, entice, or coerce Geronda to engage in sexual activity that violated Illinois law, and that defendant knowingly committed the prohibited sexual activity. To obtain a conviction under 2422B, the government must show that the defendant used a facility of interstate commerce to knowingly persuade, induce, or entice any individual who is younger than 18 years old to engage in sexual activity of a criminal nature. First, the government did not prove that defendant used a facility of interstate commerce to persuade Geronda to engage in aggravated criminal sexual abuse between May 2009 and January 2010. Defendant contends that purely intrastate use of cell phones does not constitute use of a facility of interstate commerce. Uh, there are limits on Congress's power to create federal criminal prohibitions on traditionally state-regulated spheres of non-economic activity. Finding that the jurisdictional element of 2425 is satisfied by intrastate use of the telephone capable of transmitting co communicates between states. Evenly even if purely intrastate use of cell phones constituted use of facility of interstate commerce, the government's evidence that the defendant called Geronda on a telephone is not sufficient proof that he used the facility of interstate commerce. A cell phone, according to the government, to knowingly induce, persuade, entice, or coerce Geronda to come to the Olympia Fields house to engage in prohibited sexual activity. The government provided no text exchanges showing that defendant used any words to induce, persuade, entice, or coerce, nor did Geronda testify that during any telephone conversation or on any text messages did defendant Robert Kelly use words for the purpose of inducing, persuading, enticing, or coercing her to come to his home or studios for prohibited sexual activities. Under the plain reading of the statute, there must be a nexus between the use of the cell phone and the words of persuasion, enticement, or coercion to satisfy a 2422 violation. For example, if defendant called Geronda and invited her to a party at his home, and then once there he coerced her into prohibited sexual activity, that does not constitute a Man Act violation since the defendant did not use the facility of interstate commerce, the cell phone, to coerce or induce her into the prohibited sexual activity. Use of the cell phone for some unknown communication coupled with a subsequent prohibited sex act is not sufficient to establish a violation. Lastly, if defendant really believed that Geronda was 17 when they engaged in sexual activity and that belief was reasonable, then he would not be guilty of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. Taking the evidence in the light most favorable for the prosecution, no reasonable juror could conclude that defendant knew that Geronda was 16 years old when they allegedly engaged in sexual activity between May 2009 and January 2010. Geronda turned 17 years old in April of 2010. Government's Exhibit 70, which depicts a photo of Geronda, would fail to put any reasonable person on notice that she was 16 years old rather than 17 years old. The record reflects that Geronda habitually lied about her age. The record reflects that Geronda habitually lied about her age. 
When she was 15 years old, she befriended a 23-year-old woman with whom she would attend Defendant Robert Kelly's Illinois State Court appearance in 2008. To gain access to those court appearances, Geronda had to demonstrate that she was 18 years of age, presumably by showing an identification. After using her older connections to get invited to a party at defendant's home in Olympia Fields, she sought out the defendant and falsely told him that she was 19 years old. To be clear, there is no evidence that the defendant sought out Geronda. So Geronda went to Robert's court case in 2008 and it was required to show ID that you're 18 years old to enter into that. And clearly she showed fake ID in the court proceeding and she presented fake ID when she went to a party at his house. And then when she met him, she told him she was 19. Geronda implausibly claims that after going through all of the trouble of lying about her age to get close to R. Kelly and past his security team, she decided to disclose her age of 16 immediately after their first sexual encounter. Geronda claims that defendant was indifferent to her age and continued to engage in sexual relationships with her until January 2010. The government's evidence falls painfully short of proving that the defendant did not reasonably believe Geronda was 17 years old at the time of their alleged sexual activities. The government allegedly recovered a copy of Geronda's fake ID and birth certificate in a storage facil facility purportedly belonging to the defendant, Robert Kelly. His team all said when anyone enters the property, they get a copy of their ID and their birth certificate which they kept on file. And the government, when they seized his property, they had that safe. So they had a copy of Geronda's fake ID and her birth certificate that was being held in Robert's storage facility. So they knew she lied about her age. Rather than reach the obvious conclusion that Geronda provided a fake ID to defendant's security team, to gain access to the home, the government alleges that defendant or someone in his inner circle went through the trouble of altering her ID and photo photocopying it. No rational juror could conclude that defendant engaged in sexual activities with Geronda with the understanding that she was not of legal consenting age. If you're going to uh, except the fact that she's below age, you wouldn't even collect the idea to begin with. So their argument that Robert altered her ID is asinine. Number four, racketeering act six, forced labor, Geronda. No rational juror could conclude based on the evidence abducted at trial that defendant knowingly obtained or agreed to obtain any labor or services from Geronda on January 23rd, 2010. A conviction of forced labor under 18 U.S.C. requires that the government prove beyond reasonable doubt that the defendant obtained the labor or services of another person through inter alia, threats of serious harm, and the defendant acted knowingly. The language by means of contained in the federal labor statute requires that the government establish a causal link between the labor and the services provided by the person and the threat of serious harm uh, for purposes is defined as any harm, whether physical or non-physical, including psychological, financial, or reputational harm that is sufficiently serious under all the surrounding circumstances to compel a reasonable person of the same background and in the same circumstances to perform or to continue uh, performing labor or service in order to avoid incurring that harm. Section 1589 is intended to address serious trafficking or cases where traffickers threaten harm to third persons, restrain their victims without physical violence or injury, or threaten dire consequences by means other than overt violence. The harm or threat of harm considered from the vantage point of a reasonable person in the place of the victim 
must be sufficiently serious to compel that person to remain in her condition of servitude when she otherwise would have left. Part of a fair reading of statutory text is recognizing that Congress legislates against the backdrop of certain unexpressed presumptions. The forced labor statute was passed to implement the 13th Amendment's prohibition against slavery or involuntary servitude. Congress intended to reach cases in which persons are held in a condition of servitude through nonviolent coercion, as well as the Mute R. Kelly campaign stopped the flow of R. Kelly's income. Sony releasing him uh, hemorrhaged him financially, his inability to tour. He had back taxes because of poor management and accounting that the government seized assets for that. And then he had back child support. He's been um, not in a position to hire the top-notch legal team necessary to get through this entire case, which is why he was compromised in the New York case. He needs all his fans, supporters, or anyone who wants to help to send money directly to him, not through a third party, because he has an upcoming Chicago case and he must have great legal representation to defend himself to the best of his ability. Mr. Kelly is fighting a case in Chicago and he needs all of the assistance that anyone can give from all of his fans and supporters around the world. There are three ways that you can get money to Mr. Kelly. One, you can send money via Western Union. That's for $300 or less. That will get to him fast. Or you can go to the BOP.gov website and send money via credit card. Those are the fastest ways to get it to him. Or you can mail a money order to him uh, to P.O. Box 474701, Des Moines, Iowa, 50947-0001. It will go directly to Mr. Kelly, no third party, no one in between, and he will have a record of who sent what, what amount, and from where it was sent. So it is your way to directly help directly impact, to directly put your hands on R. Kelly and show him that you love him, show that his fans from around the world are supporting him and they want to assist him in fighting for his freedom.